I've been sexualized since I was 11 years old because I had boobs, right? Men, grown men would call me jailbait when I was 13. I don't hate men, I love men. I just want you to treat me the way you treat your bros. That's it. Every single time I'll post about like sexual harassment, men will be like, that's not true. And I've been a victim of sexual harassment and I've shared that experience. Now you're telling me that that wasn't true and it's my fault. We're not making up. Like women don't walk home with keys in their hands for no reason. Like I've had people follow me. I've had these two um, guys, they were trying to like grab me around. And then they like pulled my hand, like shoved their hand down my top and I wasn't wearing a bra because I was wearing like this jumpsuit thing. Gro groped me and I was like, get off, get off. What the private investigator said that why the catfishes love my page so much is because I'll share normal stuff like just me and my mates. I'm out with my friends from school. I'm at home with my dog. I'm cooking and then I'll share sexy pictures. So then they've literally got every scenario possible. Just to fire just to be like, There it is. I think when we think of deep fakes, we think of like politicians being targeted. 98% of deep fakes online is of pornographic nature. The AI technology that they use on some of these like nudify apps doesn't even work on a man's body, right? It's just women's bodies. And this one that always sticks with me is so grim. It was a guy asking for his daughter to be deep faked. No. Oh my God, guys, welcome back to Hushed. I'm finally back in the studio. Do you know how nice it feels? It's nice here. Oh, yeah, it's cozy. It's cozy. Yeah. <laughs> Today I have Jess Davis. She's amazing. Jess, say hello. Hello. Just give everyone a little intro who you are, Baba. Oh, well, I'm Jess Davis. I am a presenter, ex glamour model. Same. Yeah, same as these. Um, and I do a lot of talking now, I guess, about like feminism and campaigning and all of that. Oh my God, anti men. Anti men. Well, this is the thing, right? That's what everyone thinks. Oh my God, you hate men. <laughs> like, we just want to be equal, but I'm sure we'll get oh, into we'll all get of that. We'll get into yeah. it. But yeah, just let everyone know like your background and some of your story because I've obviously followed you for ages mm. and we've only just met, but I feel like I've known you for ages. I know, same. Well, where should I go back to? Like, I think glamour days. Start off in the glamour yeah, days. Yeah, give everyone a little background to you basically yeah okay so I guess I started off doing glamour when I was really young I was 18 which when I look back now I'm like I was just a baby like it gives me the ick actually thinking of Same. like me doing it and like in the magazines they were like this 18 year old is thinking of taking her top off for the first time and I'm like that's actually just like oh, when you look at it it's back grim. it's actually mortifying yeah eh? it is so I was like I just want to do modeling like I never wanted to do glamour but also I had like double d boobs when I was literally 11 years old so you like me People just always commented on my body anyway. So it wasn't something I wanted to do, but I already w had like a sexualized body, if you know what I mean. So then when I applied to some agencies, they were like, oh, you should go into glam modeling. So I reached out to a glam modeling agency and like they signed me up straight away. And then I was only meant to be going on a casting with Nuts magazine. I'd never been on a casting before. I'd like barely ever been to London. I'm from Wales and grew up in like the back end of Wales. Like I might as well have grown up in like a Mormon town. Little like country girl. Literally. And I was like, oh my God, London fancy. So I was on the train to London on my own for literally the first time. And then my agent messaged me like, you know what? They're just going to shoot you. They don't even want to cash you. They're just going to shoot you today. They didn't even like, test you. Didn't even test me. And I was like, okay, someone's going to pick you up. So I got off in Paddington. There was like a taxi waiting for me with my name. And I was like, oh my God, this is so fancy. It like, does get you when I'd you're younger. I've never even been in a black cab before. Like we didn't have black cabs where I grew up. So I was like, oh my God, the black cab's picking me up. <laughs> and then we went to this um, like location and it was like a g garage door, right? And you pressed a button and it opened up. And there was like four topless girls just sat there eating pizza. And I was like, what is so my life? Like, like what is happening? Like these gorgeous girls. And I was like, hi, like never been on a glamour shoot before. And at the time, like I didn't do topless. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm just here to do lingerie. And they whisk me and I get my hair and makeup done. I was like, this is like amazing. You know, there's a stylist. And then I'm shooting and it's all going great. And then they're like, okay, time to like take the bra off. And I was like, oh no, no, no. I, don't do that. And I'm like, no, what do you mean? You're here to take, you know, take your top off. You're shooting for nuts. And I was like, no, I don't do topless. Like that, I've always said that, like with my Asian. And then I had to call my Asian. And I was like, freshly turned 18. It was it's such a big thing to be like. when you're there on set, it's yeah, horrible sometimes. you know, and there's like 10 plus people on set. There's models waiting to go next. And I'm like, oh my God, like I just don't do this. This is not what I signed up for. And we managed to come to an agreement where I did implied. So, you know, like the hand bra. Um, and then they did the interview. And I'd never been interviewed before. Did they interview if you're not? Yeah. Did and they? it was like, ask me all these questions. What was it like um, 
being in, you know, on a set like this. So I was like, well, I've done pageants before because I'd done a couple of pageants. So they've got like a, they've got like a swimwear round. So, you know, it's kind of similar. And then in big writing, when it was printed, it was like, taking my clothes off is nothing new to me. And oh my I was God, like, is this when they put the little text bits at the side of the magazine, like exclusives with oh my Jess God. or whatever? And then I had a boyfriend at the time and he was like flipping out. He's like, why did you say that? And I was like, I didn't say you that. Didn't say and then from then on, I was like, I totally need to understand what this game is all about. And I still, for about a year, was like, I'm not doing topless, not doing topless. And I got into um, Zoo and Nuts and I think FHM. And then it got to a point where they were like, you do topless or your career ends here because there's no way you can carry on like this. And I was like, promise the world by my agent, like, we're going to get you all these contracts, like 40 grand a year contract yeah, here, 30 they, contract they all here. So I was like, okay, okay. So I signed with Zoo and I did like a big reveal with them. And I remember being on my first ever topless shoot and it was just like... I never really enjoy, like, I enjoyed the shoot, but, like, the, you know, the taking the top off and being, like, having your nipples out, I was just, like, it was just part of the job, but I'd always, like, roll my eyes, being, like, oh, it's just, it was just cringe to me, and, like, I'm sure a lot of people did find it empowering, but for me, it was always just, like, it's just something I have to do, um, and that's kind of how I just fell into Like, when I went back, like, when I done, like, because I obviously didn't do it when all the mags and stuff were there, but when I do look back, I'm like, fucking hell, I was so young. Oh, it cringes me out now to think that I, like, I was just so naive. And, like, I don't recognise that person now, which is totally fine, because, you know, we all grow, but I'm just like, God, like... That girl was like I just believed everyone and anything, and you know I'd like I'd never 18. been to at eighteen. I'd never been to like London before. Like I believed everyone that said it was going to be like this and this. I remember going to like castings and nuts, um, and this casting was actually for loaded, I think, and I had to arrive. And then I just had to go into like a storeroom cupboard where there was like hoovers and mops and get my boobs out. And a man took my photo. I was like, okay, you can leave now. And I was like, what? That was that's that's it. a casting, is it? Like. It's fu- it's weird. Yeah, and when I try and say it to people, they're like, "Well, it's your choice." I'm like, "Like, I w- if I wait, if I could go back, I'm not saying I would change it. I kind of would, but like, people don't realize I was like you. I came from Glenrothes. Like, London is such an exciting thing when you're yeah. literally 18, and like we were saying it off camera. But do you remember? Like, I'm not going to say her name, but when we when I used to go to my page three shoots, she used to be so horrible to me, yes. and everyone that I've met said the exact mm-hmm. same. Like, it was oh my god. You need to change this. I cut my hair for my first ever shoot. My long, luscious hair that's grown back. That. Babe, I cut it to like above my nipples. And then looking back, that's probably why I hate all my content that's there because she cut, made me cut my hair like literally on set. Yeah, that's ridiculous. She, she like bullied me. I know so many girls that, because you think, I guess, with it being a woman photographer, that they would be more... I thought it was going to be a safety net. More safe sp- yeah, more of a safe space. And there's, you know, one specifically that I shoot with and she's so lovely. And I've shot, you know, I shot with her until I finished doing the modelling. But then the others that I've shot with or heard of, like, are actually worse because they comment more on your body, I think, as a woman. And it's like, you can't do that. You've got really chunky legs. No, you've got really wonky tits. So you actually got... Yeah, and I'm why like, would you oh say that God, to like, me? you booked me for this job, like now you're putting me down like don't you want me to feel confident and empowered on your set instead of just making me feel like a bit shit literally yeah. but that that's what I was going to say like a lot of people that look at glamour models they just are kind of they they kind of almost what's the word that I'm looking for like they they subject us to abuse because it's like oh well you put it on yourself and it's like well actually what 18 year old knows what they're doing yeah and I think also it was very much of its time like I am nearly 30 now so that was literally 12 years ago and it was of the time of like you know you had reality tv stars that were going on the front pages of nuts they used to be huge yeah and you had you know like hollyoaks girls that were on the front pages of fhm and it was like a glamorous thing it was a very normal to go into it was so normalized and now when I look back I'm like I think it really shouldn't have been that normalised how sexual it was just because I think like on reflection how much it sexualised women and made it okay to to treat women like that be really misogynistic. For Whereas me, I think it's like the age thing. Yeah, it, and, and how it definitely was the age thing of how it glorified like I saw Young my I remember, girls. Yeah, and it was like 18, 19 year old girls like get get a lo- load of this lads and I'm like oh it's cringe yeah it's cringe. I'm just like I know I put it on myself and I'm not I'm not trying to get petty but if I could go back like they'd need to regulate it well it's gone now isn't it yeah it has gone now and I think what do you think it I know gone? you know what I posted about this on my TikTok recently saying that at the time I was really like 
I was really in my like liberal feminism vibe because you know like Emily Ratajkowski she was really big at the time and she was all you know like my body my choice and I was like yeah. I do agree with that and I do and I was like you know my body my choice so I was like really upset and I like wrote a magazine um newspaper articles about it and I was really forward front and like this is really bad um because you know you're taking this away from us and I totally think we should have had that choice but on reflection and that's with lad mags right so on reflection I feel like with page three with it being in like a national newspaper it's and like the first page you see is literally a girl's boobs <laughs> then I can see how like having that at the breakfast table with your dad or like when you went into like a hairdresser's or like the car garage and there's just women's boobs everywhere. I need to tell you something. Oh my God, what? Uh, so my ex, I, I, this relationship looking back, honestly, every morning his dad would literally walk down to the shop, which is at the end of the road, get the paper. He would still get it if he knew that I was in it and I found that weird. That is and it was like, no, well, that's his thing. Like he gets the paper every morning. I'm like... <laughs> But he knows that I'm going to be in it. Yeah. And it made me feel really weird. And looking back, I'm like, what the fuck? And like, he's actually arguing with me. My ex was arguing with me. Like, well, that's his thing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, can you not just not, not get, get it that it day? Get I'm, another one. Yeah. It? I just found it really strange. It is strange, isn't it? But that's the thing. It was so normalized. So I feel like now on reflection, I like agree with page three being banned because I think it didn't really have place in like a newspaper. But then I think Lad Mags, that's specifically for that. So like, if you want to go and buy that specific magazine I get what for you're that, saying. you know what I mean? I think, well, yeah, that's got a place for Because for me, it's conflicting. I'm like, well, I always wanted to be a PhD girl. So I feel that, I feel I find it a bit hip hypocritical for me to be like, oh, I don't, I don't want it. Like for that to stop anymore, I'd be like, oh, well. I think it was just of its time, do you know what I mean? I think nowadays, Days, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think, this whole approach to women trying to stop women doing what they want with their bodies yeah. is a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah, and I think it isn't black and white. And I flip flop all the time because I'm like, of course, women should have a choice. And like, I wanted that choice. But then I can see how, for example, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they're talking about like grid girls, right? And I'm like, of course, we should have grid girls. But then when, it's like, but why was there grid girls? Why was there not grid guys? Because old men like to look at pretty girls. Like, Very true. So then it's actually like, well, that why were they not just like, if you had promo guys there as well and you all will wore the same uniform but that wasn't the case then you can see why that would then make men treat women a certain way because they're seeing them through that sexualized eye Jeez. but then also it's like well women should you know if women want to wear sexy clothes yeah, sexual, do it, that's fine. Do it. But so that's it's what... I'm, I'm always like flip-flopping every day I feel, I feel really conflicted with it right because I was talking to it about my mom and I'm like I see a lot of things that are feminist and I, and I resonate with it then there's also a toxic side of it that I'm like I just feel like that's reaching a bit mm. like for me women's rights 100 like the right because everyone I feel, I'm like someone will always say well the right to vote and I'm like well of course women should have the right to vote that's not the argument but I feel like now a lot of it is like actually attacking men. Mm. I don't feel like you attack men at all. That's why I always get like, you're a man hater. And I'm like, and you're not. I don't hate men. I love men. Do you know what I mean? Like I want to settle down with a man, start a family. All I've got is brothers and I have sisters. Like, I love my dad. Do you know what I mean? So it's funny. I, and Well, I say funny. It's actually really sad that it's actually <laughs> seen as, feminism is seen as man hating. Uh, yeah. Whereas for me, I'm like, we just want to be treated with equality like I just want you to treat me the way you treat your bros that's it like yeah, give me no, the same respect whereas of course there's different levels so you have liberal feminism you have you know the basic of being treated equal then you have radical feminism and that's, that's you know extremes. and also I think the way social media goes what we see is the extreme with everything right so radical feminism will get more hits it will get more views it'll make people more angry you'll see it more on your feed start to be. so then you start to be like well that's what feminism is you know and it's like well actually that's a certain group of feminists who believe in certain values and you know more on the radical side and some of it i feel like i associate with some of it i don't, I don't. agree with you know but i think because that's what feeds algorithms on social media people start to think that be, that is it? the basic level of feminism and i think actually the basic level is just us being treated as Same. equal. I think, like, I seen something and it was, like, oh, you know, like, toxic masculinity is, like, when he talks over a woman. And I'm, like, that is not toxic masculinity. I'm yeah, like, that's just being ignorant. That's just, yeah, <laughs> and this is what I mean. Like, I feel like it's getting pushed on socials now. Mm. All this pro, pro, pro. And I'm, like, I don't feel sorry for men in the slightest, but sometimes I'm kind of, like, they probably don't know where they stand at the minute because yeah. you've got a woman that's, like... I'm so like, I'm such a boss, babe. This don't hold the door open for me. Like all this. And I'm like, 
let's just be a gentleman. Yeah. That's not being, that's not, that's Yeah, not, I know what you mean. But you know what I hate when people are like, when men are like, God, we can't even chat a girl up. I'm like, if you don't know the difference between sexual harassment and chatting a girl up, then you're the problem oh here. Oh my God. I'm like, women white are saying. Men. White man men. I can't even speak. White van men. That's it. <laughs> it's like, we're not saying, oh my God, never hold the door open for us. Like women aren't saying that. You know, there might be, you know, a very small group of women like I'm offended. Angry women. But then it's like, but there's groups of angry men. There's groups of angry women. You know, so I just feel like, Again, it's what algorithms push and it what it's what trends on social media. So then I'm guessing if you're a man and you never look up stuff about feminism, right? Your feed isn't going to be about feminism. The only stuff they're going to see is men who are then stitching angry women on TikTok or whatever and being like, look, and then like giving their comment about yeah. it, right? So then they're going to think right. this is what all women believe. And it's like, that's really not the case. So I think it is definitely social media has put like such a spin on it and made people think that like, the worst of it is actually the it's basic level people of it. Up, I feel like it's like you've got feminists, which obviously are just wanting equality. Then you've got the radical ones, but then it's also pitting. I think sometimes it's doing more damage because then you've got women that are like, "Well, actually, no, I'm not a feminist. I'm, no, I'm not all this." And then you've got yeah. women that are like, "Bah," and I'm like, "We're just creating so much noise, guys. Can we not just live all in peace, like as one happy?" Like I know because then you have like the women arguing the other women yeah. and they're like, you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that and I don't agree with this. And it's like, you know, and I'm just like, oh my God. Like, But then also, you know, we're all not going to have the same views, you know, like every woman doesn't have the same views. That's every woman doesn't have it. That's why I think social like, media scares me, Jess. Oh my God, it's so scary. And then it's like that thing of, you know, just we all should have a basic level of what it is, right? And then if and you want to go off, a basic level of respect. And then if you want to have your personal views and opinions about something, that's fine. But this is what really annoys about social media, right? It's like, I'll post stuff. And I'm like, I'm just posting it because I want to post that content. I'm not posting to get in a debate about you, about your opinions. Like, if you want to have that, go in, like, join a Discord group or something or, like, go and Google it yourself if you want the answers to it. I'm just posting my content for it to set up on my page and I'm not going to get into an argument. And I think, it's you know, if you're posting about feminism as a woman, if you're posting about racism as a person of colour, like, they're not posting it to then get into an argument with a white person about this or this. It's like, if you want to go educate yourself, go and educate yourself. Yeah, but it's, it's not on the person who is the minority in that case or who is a victim of that to have to, like, get in a debate with you about their own personal experience. And that sort of annoys me. <laughs> Every single time I'll post about, like, sexual harassment in the UK against women, men will be like, that's not true. And this is this. It's like... Babe, like I'm telling you as a woman about my lived experience. Like this How isn't a, it's with like this me. isn't a game for me. It might be a game for you and a bit of fun online, but for me, it's like actually quite upsetting to sit here and have to try and justify myself all the time. So like that's what I don't get. Like it's not I think a lot of people treat social media as like a game and a bit of, you know, somewhere to have an argument. But it's like if people are sharing their real experiences as someone who's lived through it, like it's not a game anymore. Yeah, just take a chill pill, scroll, look at the stuff that you want to look at. Yeah. If you enjoy taking content and you want to post it, post it. But I feel like so many people have a shit day and then they go and project on others and like hide behind this little troll oh, account. And it's like, yeah. what are you actually gaining from giving me shit? Yeah. Like, and also I think like when they're giving you shit as a bit of fun and it's not like personal to them, then they give you shit and then they just scroll on to the next person who forgot about it. Whereas you who is getting it, who feels really like, well, actually I have day. had, you know, I've been a victim of sexual harassment and I've shared that experience. Now you're telling me that that wasn't true and it's my fault. And then I'm sat at home feeling really upset about it and it's ruined my Setting day. About and it. then like you think about it weeks later and this random person like forgot about that comment the moment they scrolled on. And I, I think just, people forget about that. I've never, I've never honestly like went to even, not even a thought has came in my head to go and write a horrible comment. Yeah. Like I'm quite bad for retaliating. Like if someone <laughs> gives me shit and like, I'm like, I will shut you down yeah. and I need to stop that. Because I think sometimes texts can come off mm. different. But also like, why should you have to be like the bigger person all the time and ignore it? I'm like, yeah, no, I want to call account. you out. Yeah, and you're on my page. Like... But then it's kind of like giving them the energy that that's what they want, right? Because they they're always bored want to respond. And at home. Yeah. But this is why I think that social media has to be regulated. Like yeah, everyone's it on it every like, day. It is crazy. What I think back to, I think Instagram say like what 10, 12 years old, like Twitter's about the same. It's like, how in a decade has it changed the way our whole world works, how our society works, how we like our behaviors with each other, like the way we think about ourselves, the relationship with ourselves, our mindset, Work, all from everything. this like little social media app. It's literally Sorry. crazy that these like nerds built for, you know, like I watch Facebook um, 
What's it called? The Social Network film yeah, recently yeah, again, Mark right? Thingy yeah, yeah, Mark Thingy. Yeah, And I was watching it like, this is literally shaped, you know, like our politics, our presidents, all that kind of stuff. And it's like just these random dudes who made it to rape women. That's exa- that's the reason Facebook started. It's like, so how is it even like shaped our world? It's like, it's but crazy. But why is it not it. regulated? I, I I don't know. It needs to be regulated. Obviously, there's this whole thing about free speech and how you regulate people's free speech. And then I think the danger of the internet is that it's worldwide. Like it is literally the World Wide Web. So like, if you have rules in the UK, but then if I'm being trolled or if I'm being catfished or whatever and scammed by someone in another like country, in and it's like, then it's like, oh well, actually, you have to you, go, you have to report it to that police, and it's like, oh, it's actually not illegal there. And then you've got to track it. It's like so difficult to regulate the but internet. It's like we I need mean. one law for like the whole world. I mean, how on earth are you going to get? Do you that? not think even just starting with everyone haven't had like verified accounts with ID would start? Like it's yeah, it's so simple. Yeah, I know. I think. I, I kind of agree with that. And I think the argument is that it could put people at danger of, um, I guess, that your content, your um, ID being leaked, but also like groups who perhaps might be using social media under an alias because they can't talk about that kind of stuff in their country, for example, so they're gay. But then with Twitter, right, I think it's the same Instagram. If you're verified with the blue tick, it might be different now because obviously Elon Musk and all that, but like you had to, <laughs> Elon, you, yeah. you had to send your ID to them. You had to send a picture. So they have the IDs of like the most famous people in the I world. Mean, so why so can they do it for regular people? Why can they not do it for everyone else? So yeah, I think that would, that seems like a perfect answer, right? Because you just can't hide behind a fake account. I just, I, I can't comprehend, like you said, how everything is, like we literally live our world through it, but people can just go on, make accounts, 12 accounts, like yeah. give someone shit and then not even be held accountable for it. Yeah, I know, isn't it? It's crazy. And I think people go, they think of the online space as like a fake world. That's not real. But actually everyone lives online now. So that, that is, is real. real. That is our real world now. So that's why the laws have to keep up with it and we have to address it because like, it's crazy. It's like the wild, wild west. And then what, you shut your phone away and it changes. No, like, like we are saying, it's changed the way we behave our attitudes how we behave in the street it's encouraged our politics like that is our real world now so like how they can just still be like oh no it's just like an online space it's not it's not real it's like it's actually it like it stops me posting sometimes yeah like, i used to be like so pro like get my content let's go out let's do this like because of the way that it is and it's maybe just the audience that i've attracted fuck knows <laughs> but it actually stops me like i've went stagnant on instagram because i'm like oh i'll post when i want to post mm. and it's quite nice because it is on my terms now, but yeah. I, I'm not doing that because I want to. Like, I'll, the amount of drafts I've got on my TikTok because I'm like, oh, I said that wrong. Oh, like, this doesn't look good. Oh, like, what are people going to say? It mm. stops me posting. I'm like, this is how I make my money. Yeah. And I'm actually being this cautious about it because the online space is just vile. Yeah. Oh, TikTok savage as well. Babe, I can't. I speak about it on this podcast all the time. I'm like... You guys need to fucking relax. Go in nature, hug a tree. Yeah. Like, call your friend, oh do something that's going to make your day better and then go on TikTok yeah. because it's so toxic. It is. But also I feel like, you know, talking about we always worry about, oh, what if I said this and I didn't say that right? And it's like, again, people make mistakes. People are human. And in your day-to-day life, when you're having conversations with like your friends or whatever, you learn and you chat and you make mistakes. But like, as soon as it's online, it's like, that's your digital footprint. And it's like, sorry, you didn't say that right. You said that wrong. Cancel and it's like, culture. Yeah, cancel culture. I just feel like people should be able to make mistakes and 100% call people out on it in terms of like, you know, if you're saying something that's really yeah, racist or whatever order. and out of order, you call them out on it. But then also by just cancelling someone and not giving them the space to actually learn, like if they genuinely didn't know that that was offensive or that was wrong, obviously if someone keeps doing it and it's like, okay, you've been given a chance. So you can tell when someone's a exactly, But not. it's like, you know, when you see... You know, like, I, I remember it was an I'm a sub a couple of years ago and this, was it Jack Maynard, I think? And he's like a young guy who's like 20 at the time. Yeah, yeah, Connor He went in brother. there. Yeah, and he went in there and then someone pulled up tweets from when he was like 12 or something. And they were slurs that, you know, but in school, I remember being in school and that, you know, stuff that you would say, you would never say now. And it's, they kicked him out straight away. And I just feel like, well, you're holding him accountable to something from eight years ago. Instead of giving him the space to be like, look, these these have been pulled up what do you think about it now? And letting him stay in there and actually learn from it. And I think now we've come, you know, say that was a few years ago, you had people on there now like bullying people saying this and that. And it's like, oh, it's just entertainment. And it's like, you've got to pick and choose. Like you can't Remember hold Big people. Brother? Oh, Remember my, how savage Big Brother was? was. That would never be allowed now. Yeah. But I always 
talk about like to my friends my family how sensitive everyone is mm. like i'm sensitive in the sense but if I, someone's coming at me online and they're being really nasty that's not being sensitive that's just being human mm. but i feel like everyone actually is too sensitive these days like you can't see something with a bit of backbone and then someone being like you're being rude and it's like well i'm being rude because yeah you've pissed me off like yeah it's like we have to all walk around do you know that on black- eggshells yeah you know that black mirror episode have you seen it have when- babe, i've not watched black mirror oh, I, I need wa- to watch yeah it. there's this one episode i can't remember what it's called now but basically everyone has got everyone gets rated so every interaction you have with someone so you go to the coffee shop and the coffee person hands you your drink and you go thank you so much and then they can rate you like on uber or whatever like five out of five so every single interaction you have with someone you're like oh my god i have to be i have to be perfect because they're going to rate me and you need to get a certain rating to be and i feel like that's it. like we have to like yeah. be now we're on eggshells you worry about this too much you worry about that and obviously we have to care about people's feelings right and we've moved on we understand what's offensive and we can't act certain ways before but also it's like people like we say we're human i have to be able to make mistakes and, yeah, and not you, be held every day is a and be cancelled day. for the rest of our life you know every like we're always day. learning and that's what i mean like about cancel culture is i find it really really bad like there's certain stuff that people stuff that people do and i might not agree with it but do they have to lose their job on it and i think influencers right now have got a massive target on their back like mm. influencers just chucked about constantly right but Yes, we are on social media. That is how we make our money. But if I used to work 95 jobs. So I've worked at McDonald's. I've worked for RBS. I've done normal working jobs. Mm. Like, because I do that, uh, because I'm an influencer, why do you have to go at that? It's like, oh, well, she's an influencer. She signed up for that. Da, da, da. And it's like, well, actually, it's just my work. Yeah, like, it's like, do you go into McDonald's and treat people like absolute shit, shit because they signed up to be in front of house? No, you don't. So it's like, just because I'm front of house on a social media app that you're consuming all the time. So this Does is that actually... that make sense, what I yeah, said? No, do you get what I mean? Because it's like, just because you have signed up to be an, you know, an influencer, so you're front of house on I'm Instagram. Not even you're not up signing for up it. to be in like, oh, okay, you can treat me like shit. Like, you don't go into reception, but like, you know what? You're front of house, so you signed up to be treated like shit. So I'm actually going to be really rude to you rude because to you. you'll be asked to leave and you know that that's not acceptable. So, like, why just because you're someone who exists online, which obviously is also everyone consumes content. So you're People actually making fall content into the job of influencer. It doesn't mean yeah. that they they claim to be it some people just make really nice content i think it's people such a it. trigger word right people hate the word influencer and i'm just like people don't add like that's just word that's been given right to social media creators content creators influencer and i'm like but why are people so triggered about it i just feel like people have a certain thought about what it is to be that and you must think you're a certain someone it's like but again we've talked about we live in the day of the digital world so like People, someone's got to be a content creator. Someone's got to make the content. You're on social media all the time commenting on that content. Like, so you, you are literally, fucking be one. Yeah, you're literally part of that world, yet you hate them people because how dare they think that they're someone. It's just like it's crazy. Like, oh, I get, oh, well, you know, like Love Island made you famous, blah, blah. And I'm like, actually, it gave me a great platform, but I already had a following before it. Yeah. So it's not, I don't owe everything to it. But yeah, I owe a lot to it, even though it was a day, two days, three days. But I'm like, why did you have to get that neb in? Like, I don't already know that. Yeah, but also, do you go into an office and be like, oh, sorry, like, you're a CEO, but you have to remember who you were because actually you started off here. It's like you just accept that, okay, you might have started off on Love Island, then you move on to this, 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 or, you know, you might have started off being a social media creator on Instagram and now you're on Strictly or whatever, but people are like, how dare you use that platform to become it. something? It's like everyone works through stages, whatever job you're in, and there's just such an anger. And I think it's to do with the fact that in the UK, right, this is my maybe controversial opinion, but I feel like... <laughs> Say it with your yeah, chest, girl. I feel like people in the UK are so miserable they feel like you have to work really fucking hard to get somewhere in life and they see someone making content and they think that's such an easy job how dare you make all this money and do actually something that's fun it's like people are so miserable they think that we have to have all these jobs that we all hate and we hate working it and it's such a slog and they see people online and it looks glamorous and they think how dare you have a job that's fun it is jealousy 100 100 percent. and it's the two worst things that you can have like once you let go of the traits people you will (laughs) feel free because I used to be like that yeah I did like I used to look at like what else someone else had what car they drove what clothes they've got and I'm like 
they're literally just tangible assets. Mm-hmm. Like they actually don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And I feel like we all do that, right? Like especially course, it's with human, social media, it's you, human nature. you compare yourself, and I think that's the thing with you know, like Instagram, or whatever. It's like you're not just comparing yourself to your neighbors anymore. The girls at school. It's like you're comparing yourself to literally millions of people, of people online. So it's really difficult not to. But I just feel like if you're not happy with your job, babe, go get another job. Then like go if you're not happy with your life, then change it. We don't take it out on someone else because they're yeah, enjoying their life. Know. Literally, they're strangers. You don't know what they're doing. We all know social media is a highlight reel, especially if that's your job. Like I'm not going to post if that's my job. Me crying about something because I'm going to post content that is that I've been paid to post or that I'm promoting myself. Like so, it's just like you know that that's a fake world. Why are you holding someone to account for like? Why are you so like? like, Why are you so aggy aggy about it? And then the other side of social media, guys. If you don't know, Jess has done an amazing documentary about deep fake porn. Mm. Now we all know, like the Tom Cruise videos. Like what's the other one, Kylie? Yeah, I find them creepy as they are creepy. Why would you do that? They're really explain to everyone what it is because for those that don't know, it's mad. It's actually eerie. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when we think of deep fakes, we think of like politicians being targeted so I know that was really famous like Barack Obama one Trump one um and then obviously on TikTok now there's the Tom Cruise one which is I was like it I literally looks like it. him it's freaky and there's a few others as well but actually 98% of deep fakes online is of pornographic nature and most of them are women and a lot of it the the AI technology that they use on some of these like nudify apps doesn't even work on a man's body, right? It's just women's bodies that it's built to work on. So I did a documentary. What? It can't even work it on a man. It won't even work on a man's body, some of this. So you've got these sites and you put um a picture of you, say, in clothes, a bikini or whatever, and it will nudify this AI technology, artificial intelligence, and it will remove the clothes and make a nude of you that you've never even taken. But it doesn't work on a man's body because they haven't built the tech to work on men's body because they're targeting women. It's literally crazy. So I did this doc. Ooh. It's grim. It's so misogynistic. And I did this doc for um, BBC Three called Deep Fake Porn, Could You Be Next? And it kind of came about because of... I loved it, by the way. Thank you. I loved it. It came about because of obviously our history as Glamour Girls, right? And then I did my first doc with them about leaked nudes and yeah, stolen we'll nudes. Yeah, we'll get that one too. Yeah. So I was already aware of like all these forums where my content from my Glamour Girl leak. past was being leaked. And I've got friends that still do like OnlyFans and stuff. So every now and then I'll just check where my content is. And I'll also just be like, you know what, babe, I'm just going to check where yours are and I'll report it for them. So I was on these forums and I just saw these threads pop up about deep fake porn. And I was like, right, like what, what's this I'd all about I'd never heard then? about it until yeah. you, you like done the documentary. And it was only from being on these forums that I knew about it. And then I was looking and then I was like, right, I knew that there's some like celeb deep fake porn out there. But I've seen all these requests come in of quote unquote normal girls who aren't in the public eye being like, will you deep fake her for me? Can you deep fake her for me? Will you nudify her? Which is, you know, these apps where you make nudes of girls. So then I dig a bit deeper and then saw all this literally horrific stuff where these guys are requesting deep fake porn images or videos of like, well, their wives, but their sisters, their aunts, their girlfriends, their ex-girlfriends. What yeah. the fuck? And with some of the sisters, it was like, I am going to blackmail this bitch. And in other ones, it was because they had a sexual kink about them. And this one that always sticks with me is so grim. It was a guy asking for his daughter to be deep faked. And the picture he posted no. asking other people, because this is it, right? It's a community. And they go, who will do this deep fake for me? You know, And they all help each other out for free because this is their hobby. And the picture he posted was this teenage girl in school uniform. And it was like, we deep fake my daughter. And I was How like, is that, that is allowed? so fucking grim. And then they're going, boost, boost. Yeah, yeah, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Or they'll be like, oh, if someone will deep fake for her, you know, this, you know, I'll give you these girls Instagram accounts so you can go dox them, which is basically like harass them. So they can literally just take normal girls from Instagram anywhere and just make them. Yeah. And I think that's a scary thing because say, for example, when, you know, when I was looking into the leaked news, it's like, well, these girls are glamour girls. They're OnlyFans girls. They post that kind of content. Does it mean that I think absolutely they haven't consented to that? And that is so frustrating. But then this is another layer. It's like, okay, maybe you've never even decided to take a nude or take a picture in your lingerie 
but they can take your face from Instagram, Facebook, from your LinkedIn and put that into a deepfake porn video. And now there's a graphic video of you in a porn film that exists online forever that you might and not even know about. they look realistic. I don't they care do what look, anyone says. They do they look realistic. Look- Especially now, like the text got so much better. And before it was celebs that were targeted because you needed so many different angles of the face. So obviously uh-huh. there's all this content online of celebs. Whereas now so you can just use one picture, two pictures, and they look pretty realistic. And especially on TikTok, right? I do it. I'm on there all the time. Now there's all this video content of us out there. So they get all these pictures of our faces. And it's just like so crazy to think. And it's currently not illegal in England and Wales to create deep fake porn or someone without their consent. So they're not even going to regulate So us. since my film came out and they spoke to campaigners, the government in the UK has come out and said they are going to make deep fake porn illegal. So in the upcoming online harm safety oh, bill. Oh, they can do something right for once. Yeah, but so... The online harm safety bill, it keeps getting pushed back again through Parliament. We've had, what, three Prime Ministers since it even came about. (sighs) So it's all well and good them saying we're going to do something about it. But until until it actually gets put into law, it's still not illegal in the UK to make that. I think how crazy is that? But, you know, you have these politicians. They're like old dudes that, like, don't even know what TikTok is, right? So I'm like, how are we putting the regulations of the internet on these old men who don't even understand what Facebook is. And you know what's really frustrating, right? Have you seen recently on like social media and all of that, the whole discourse, which I could go on forever, but about like Andrew Tate and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know then, what? I want oh, your opinion on him and I bet. But then you had politicians and this was really um, upsetting, I think, because you have like Jess Phillips, who's a Labour MP. She is um, the spokesperson for like domestic violence stuff in the UK, right? And you have politicians, there's another one in Wales coming out being like, oh, I don't know much about Andrew Tate, but, you know, and I'm like, right, so you're the person in charge of our laws, the online harm safety bill, safety for women in the UK, and you're bragging basically about the fact that you were under the radar and, oh, I didn't know who he was. It's like, he is one of the most dangerous individuals that is radicalizing young men in schools and you don't even know who he is. How are you in This is literally your job. Like your job is to regulate the internet. You're literally sitting in parliament trying to draft up laws about how to regulate the internet and you don't know one of the most impressionable and popular influencers online. It's like online. the blind leading the fucking blind in exactly. parliament. Exactly, exactly. It's ridiculous. I just can't believe that they're actually not regulating it. Like that should literally be one of the first things. You're subjecting women. I I do OnlyFans. Everyone knows that. But when, g- girls that aren't, that don't want to do that... Mm. I mean, I don't want that done to me. And this is this is the fine. This is the argument that I get get into all the time, right? Your documentary about leaked nudes, right? People don't realise. Yes, I have a page. I distribute content. If you want to pay for that and sign up, that is great. But you, I didn't consent to you to then leak my content. No, it's so, it literally drives me oh, crazy. Oh, it comes with the job. Oh, that's it's all like, that. No, no it, it doesn't. doesn't. No, it doesn't. And I think this is it. We need, people need to understand what consent is, right? It's like, you give consent for one platform or one specific experience isn't blanket consent. So why do you think just because you've uploaded it behind a paywall, which means you've given consent for it to be viewed behind a paywall, that's it. That's what you've consented to. And then it's like, well, I'm now just going to leak it because what did she think? It's like, right, we all understand copyright laws around like, I can't just go and take Beyonce's music and I can't put it on my TikTok. My TikTok will be taken down if I put that on a TikTok video about, you know, it's like, we understand that I can't just go and claim someone's movie and copyright it. You know, it's like that thing from back in there, like you wouldn't steal a car. Why would you steal? We all understand that. It's like when it comes to women's, predominantly women's when it comes to women's bodies nudes online it's like oh it's free game I can take that it's like no you well, can't no you can't because it's copyrighted to you like my content I see as art I don't care what anyone says like yeah. I work hard on the content I shoot for it like it's it's part of who I am but I don't agree for it to be on reddit to be on all these places like I had Jess and Mike on and they were like yeah but it's free advertising I'm like you guys might enjoy that, but I really don't. Like, I don't. If I wanted the free advertisement, I would ask for it. Yeah, and but also, I'm not. I think there's free advertisement, but when your content's leaked everywhere for free, all your content, so why would someone come and pay for it? Like, in these forums, it frustrates me so much. I'm literally such a lurker. Like, I look at them every Babe, week. I don't know how I'm you just do like, it. I I'm can. just like looking at them and I'm like, I need to understand their psyche. Like, I'm just like, these guys. And what then, is going through your brain? Yeah. And then the thing is, they're like, 
oh, who's got this one? I'll trade, right? So it's like, right, I'll pay for you. Yeah, they the trade drumming. files, so they'll trade they? them, Or they'll download them or they'll upload them in the mega file. And they'll be like, I'm not paying for that. You know, she's a whore. I'm like, but you want to take that content. And she, if you're a fan, treat them as a fan. Like pay, you, you'll, if you're a fan of Taylor Swift, like you'll pay and you go to a concert. Like if you're a fan of someone on OnlyFans, pay, pay to view their them. content. Because otherwise they're not making any money. Like you don't get a plum around and be like, you know what, babe, I'm actually not going to pay you. Like, no, I just don't get that's people. That's your content. You want to you consume images. You want to consume porn, for example. You should pay for your porn. You know what I mean? You should pay for your OnlyFans. Whatever it is, you should pay for sexual images if you like them. If people have if the same principles, the content, pay they just it. look at it like, oh, well, it's OF girls. It doesn't mean anything. It's like, well, actually, it does. Like, it doesn't matter what you do on the site. Like, I don't get my new now. If girls do, that's great. I don't even barely do topless anymore. Like, yeah. And I'm like, if I want to do that, that's fine. But... When it comes to actual principles of things, why does that seem to go out of the window? Because I do that. I, I just don't get that mentality. No. I Everyone just, can do what they want yeah. in my eyes. Like, I mean, job wise, people want to do porn. I say it all the time. People want to do porn. If you want to be a plumber, if you want to be an electrician, if you want to be an MP, like let people live. But why can that be leaked? I think, you know what really annoys me is that like, I think, you know, if we're talking about porn now, it's such a personal thing. It's the most personal thing someone could share online, right? It's your body, it's sex. And they've agreed to do that for a fee. They want to be paid. They're not doing it, people aren't doing it for the fun. Doing it they, yeah, you know what I mean? Like they're doing it because that's their job. And then you're like, oh no, I'm going to consume that for free. Actually, I'm not going to pay for that. And I'm going to leak their content. I'm going to share it with everyone because, you know, I don't have a respect for that. Any other job, you'd expect to pay for it. Any other service, you expect to pay for it. But why, when it comes to the most personal thing, you think you should have access to that for free? Babe, think about how many people get aggy when their pictures are used on Tinder or they've got a fake profile on Facebook made or, oh my God, like, gals, I've got this girl's using my photos on Tinder. Like, I've got a boyfriend, blah, blah. I'm like we i live through that all the time yeah but because i've got an only fans i'm subjective to it it's like but i'm doing that so that people pay for my content yeah i'm not doing it for fun so that everyone can just have my fucking <laughs> photos like you're missing the whole principle of it i know and it's like if you walked down the street and you saw your instagram picture up on a big billboard that apple of you would you be like i want to be paid for that like i didn't consent to that everyone would understand that that's not okay why do you think it's okay to just take your content on only fans and be like i'm actually just gonna post it wherever i want and do whatever i want with it because i've i've got the right to that <laughs> i've got it a minute, is... minute i've got this greasy turner bitch on facebook it's got like seven thousand like people following it and she stole all my photos and i've reported it <gasps> jess I've, i'll show you in a minute no. it's fucking annoying i've tried to report it to meta everything it's not getting taken down people are messaging me about it constantly and i'm like well if you know it's a reported page why are you following it and for me it's the eerie feeling of like they've got photos of me which i've all archived right so i'm like how do you have them mm -hmm. how long have you had them for and i don't mean my glamour photos or that i mean like my old facebook photos like photos of me when i was literally like 18 like going out with the gals in my little dress and they're using all of these images and i'm like the thought of them having all of that yeah it actually really upsets me. It's really grim to think someone's at home doing that. And that's what my first doc was about BBC Three. And it came about because I had hundreds of catfish accounts over the years pop up, use my images. <sighs> and it just becomes something I just normalise. Like, I think I think I'm like, so many it, of the but... girls, glamour girls, had it happen to us. And we're like, oh yeah, whatever. And men will message you like, you've took money from me. And I'm like, babe, I've never spoke to you in my life. You're literally a six-year-old man. Why do you think an 18-year-old girl with a tits out is messaging you? Like, one, get with it. Like, the delusion. But two that's not me and I you know and it's like having that thing that oh now the responsibility is on me to be like yeah well you've took to my money and yeah. it's like well I've and actually not done anything to like try and regulate your emotions be like I'm so sorry that's happened to you it's like I haven't done this to you this yet, is not me this is not me and then that's where the doc came from because I was like where's this happening and then in the investigation we found out about the world of e-whoring what is that so e-whoring is basically this online <laughs> all these it's so honestly it's like so <laughs> depressing um so e-whoring is this world online where these predominantly men um will take girls images usually it'll be like only fans girls glamour girls girls that have got like sexy pics right but it could be anyone and they'll take your instagram content everything they've got all your content there and they'll put it all into a folder and they will then sell this folder as a catfish so, like this is jess's folder buy this for ten dollars 
and use it to catfish men online and make money out of them. So in these worlds online, they're trading these folders. So all our content, so this is why mine pops up all the time, right? Is they just buy it. Oh, ten dollars, just go and buy. And it's it's like a pack oh, ready to go. Content. Start it's like start up your own business with an ebook basically, but it's all my images. And it probably is the same with you. Oh, it's definitely and the same it's with so me. creepy because what I found out, which is so weird. So in these places, they like the catfishing is not just like a hobby that someone's doing. Home. Sometimes it is. But in these places, they have offices. Like you go in, a lot of it is Nigeria and in Asia, the Philippines. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They've, they, they've oh, yeah, got, yeah. It's, like, it's a nine to five job. They go to, they go to they the go office in the shift. morning for their shift. Yeah, and they go on shift and you clock in and you've got the folder and you act as that person, say, until 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. And they've got a script because they all do the same thing. They'll all say the same thing, right? And you've got a script. Is it these dodgy lengths? Um, they'll have a script and the script will be like, you know, all this sexual stuff. And it'll be like, oh, babe. Um, and they've always got a sob story, right? I'm dying of cancer. I've run away from home. I'm pregnant. And that's how they get money out of people. And the, 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 the people, the woman that I talked to, the private investigator, she was amazing, Laura Lyons. And she was like, this is a job to them. And then they'll clock out and, you know, you'll come over and take over my shift, but you know exactly what to say. You sound like me because we're following a script. Oh my It's God. a business. I've heard it all now. It's a business over there. So it's just like... There's no escaping. But then again, it's like, well, how do you track that down? Because I might report that or you might report that in the UK, but then they'll have to go and take it to the Instagram authorities over there. Instagram is for reporting. It's like, oh, report it. It's the worst. They literally do nothing about it. No. And I'm like, I'm I'm verified. I'm asking you to please shut this shit down. Yeah. Please just do it. Like You've got all my details that like we said earlier. You've got all my details. You've got everything. I'm reporting this. Your te- There's a fucking report button there for a reason. What is going on? I get all the time, I literally yesterday I reported to Catfish and um, I just get back from Instagram. We've been really busy. We haven't actually had time to even look That's at this. All I'm the like, time. you haven't even looked at it. All the time. And you want, you're saying that your platform's safe. I'm going to quickly show you this, Gracie. For people. Sh- yeah, show I'm me. I'm going to show you It's babe. so freaky, but it will literally, I could be like, <laughs> three days ago. Look at this engagement. Seriously, and my and best they... mate Ruby. I'm like, why is Ruby being subject to oh, this? No. Babe, look. And are they kind of like selling stuff? Like, are they making I don't money? Know. There's or... this dodgy link, and I'm not even. I'm not even. Oh, the is it like a chat? Yeah, this is it, like a chat room link. Women so then cry that's not what... because they are weak, but because they cannot find words to express their feelings. Yeah, they've always got weird like quotes on them. A wink. Have fun with me, please don't. <laughs> Yeah, there's, they'll put like chat links up and then men will put their details How in. How do they have these photos? It's really weird. <laughs> but they've all come in and they'll be on a folder and then they just dish out these folders online. And in the folder will be like... These are photos the link that I to your archived Instagram before to get the show, stuff. before like... Because I deleted my whole Facebook and then I archived all my stuff on Instagram. Babe, this content's been gone for like... A minimum year and a half. How do you have all of this? Because it was probably way before then that they even had these folders of you that is just there, ready to go. I still don't have the guts to say I miss you, do I? Spectacular, so gorgeous lady, bless you. Like all of these things and I'm like, I I spent so much of my time, babe, commenting, fake profile, this is not me. (laughs) Like I screenshotted my Instagram, like this is me, da da da. And then people were like, oh, I had a feeling, like, thank you. And I'm like, well, if you had a feeling, why are you engaging in this shit? Yeah, and it's actually quite sad, I think, because, like, why are you... And I try... I do... I have empathy, right? But then I'm like, why are you as a... You know, they're always older, 50, 60-year-old man. And the content they use from me is from my glamour days, right? So I'm like 18, 19, 20. That's just my normal and I'm like, Instagram And I'm why picks. do you think that a 19-year-old girl is sending you yeah. new nudes online? Like, I'm sorry, but... Jokes on you, babe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, use your noggin a bit. Come on. Yeah. Like. But then they do, this is the, also, that's the thing, like they target vulnerable men, right? Yeah, They're in chat rooms. Lonely. They target lonely men and they say to them, oh my God, like I really like you. And, you know, and they're like, this oh, one yeah. guy was messaging me and he was like, you know, um, they were saying that they want to have kids with me and all this. And, and that, you know what I mean? Like, it's sad. What's your on worst there, catfish story? Like, what's the worst thing that you've had <sighs> someone message you? I think you, it would like, be like someone was like, yeah, that they wanted to have kids with me. Like, I literally loved them. I sent them all this money. And then they thought that like, Maybe this isn't right, and they Google image reverse that. search. If if you think it's a catfish, Google image reverse search. 
the picture. Oh my God, I forgot that you can do that. Yeah. If you go on Google, on your app or just like on your laptop, but like you have to have Google, not Safari, right? And you can just search by image and it will show you where that picture came from. So if that came from my Instagram, that my Instagram even gives will come me up. The fear though. And you but just think you like, know okay, that? actually that's, so that's where a lot of the guys have found me. Um, and the guy who I spoke to my documentary, Walter, he was so sweet, bless him. He had been catfished by someone using my images and he fell for it and he was talking to him every single day. And this is the freaky bit, right? Because they were saying that, he would be like, what are you up to, babe? Um, oh, I'm just chilling on the sofa. Send me a picture. And straight away, they had a picture of me on the sofa to send. I'm just cooking. And they had a picture to send. And what the private investigator said that my, why the catfishes love my page so much. It's just so grim. Probably with you. It's because I'll share normal stuff like just me and my mates. I'm out with my friends from school. I'm at home with my dog. I'm cooking. And then I'll share sexy pictures. So then they've literally got every scenario possible. Just to fire Just to be like, there it is. And it seems realistic because it's like, okay, well, she did tell me she was away with a dog and now there's a picture of her away with a dog. She did tell me she was with a friend and now she's out with a friend. So they they like build it up, you know, like it's literally these packs have got every possible content ready to but go. I, but, but this is what I mean. Like people say that we've got it coming to us because of our glamour days. But then what's, what's, but it happens to, the, you know, this happens to so many girl girls. down the street that's got all her photos taken, deep fake porn, like fake accounts. You'd feel bad for her, but why didn't you feel bad for me? Because I didn't consent to it either. Exactly. You didn't think when you went and had a shoot at page three, that then that content was going to be used and then it was going to be posted everywhere. And then, you know, you just consented for that one shoot or even for your OnlyFans, right? You can't take a picture for OnlyFans. You didn't even be like, you know what? I actually thought that this image was going to be traded and sold without my consent online Never. in underground forums to catfish men out of money. Like, were you consenting to that? No, you're consenting to put a picture up behind a paywall. That's what I mean. That's like, it. I said to you earlier, like, I'm always conflicting. It's like you with the feminist thing, like conflicting. I was saying to you earlier, like, I really don't want to be on OnlyFans anymore. Like, I think that's me done with it. Because all of the shit. What is it that makes you think? Is it like the stigma or is for it like me, the fact that the, the content gets leaked or for a bit me, of everything? The stigma, like I always try and fight it, but I'm human. I'm like, do you know what? Like I always will have a label on my head. Like people will always make assumptions. Like I'm lucky I've got a great circle of friends. I've also got some friends that do it. When I travel, like me and Ben meet so many amazing people. A lot of them influencers do have it. So like, I feel like I am in a little bit of a safe space with it and my family are really accepting. But I don't know, just part of me like feels like there is, like, know that Game of Thrones scene when it's like, shame, shame, shame. I feel like that's how people are always just going to see it. And it makes me really sad because I'm like, I know I'm a great human and I don't mean that to blow smoke up my own arse, but like, I know I'm a great human. I just like making that type of content. Some of it is seedy and that's one of the reasons why I'm like, I'm not going to say I've been peer pressured into it, but there is part of me that's like, I wish I didn't, there's loads of stuff that I wish I didn't put out, full stop. Like, and I'll be human and say that. Like, I'm very pro, do what you want. I'm very pro, like, if you want to make money. For me, it's like, I, I post sexy content on Instagram anyway. So I can monetize the shit out of it on OF, like, which is what I do. But there is certain times where I'm like, all they want is this type of content. And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to be pressured into oh, well, you know what? I'll make so much money if I do that. And I'm like, I feel like that's kind of what the page is now. Like the whole aspect of OnlyFans has turned into now. It's like, if you aren't going to do the big levels, there is money in it. People will argue. I used to argue, oh, you can't do this, like blah, blah, blah. But I feel like if you actually resonate with yourself and you actually just be honest, it's like, if you aren't doing crazy shit on it, you aren't going to make crazy money. Like I, I do very well for what I do, like for what I do, Jess, but... I don't know, like, I feel like it is, part of it is now, like, I feel, like, dirty because of the way that people make me feel about it. And I shouldn't let that bother me. But I'm like, I can't help but let it. I keep fighting it and keep fighting it. But, like, I, I don't know why. I know, it's crazy, isn't it, that shame. And I feel like I have sp shame. spoken. Shame, shame, isn't it? And I've spoken about this before, like, that I've always felt that like this cloud, that I'm walking around this cloud of shame. Like, oh, my God. Like, when like you it. meet new people and it's like, what if they Google me and they see my boobs yeah, and then they're going to think this about me? What if I apply for a job and they're going to say, what, if I, what, what, when, what about when I'm dating and I meet someone? And it's just like, shame, you can't feel shame unless someone makes you feel it right. Shame is like a fake emotion it's like shame is put on you so it's like if I'm like you know what I'm not I'm not ashamed about what I do and I'm not so it's like it's so, so why weird. you make where why am I carrying it around but it's crazy like and it's happened since like you know day dot right about predominantly women's bodies right because men can post their bodies and post topless or post nude that's why I'm and so it's pro, just like, like oh that's just fine boobs. you know or it's like lads but when it's like 
women's bodies like oh she's a slut she's a whore you know she's devalued now or whatever but it's like but sex will always sell how many people who think that watch porn how many people oh, consume so yeah consume content online you know how many people will watch sexual stuff but then they don't agree with you actually doing it. Oh, I'll watch it for free. I'll actually watch your content or I'll watch both for free. But God forbid that you actually want to be paid for it. No, that you're a slut about that. And it's just like, it's so ridiculous because it sex sells, right? People want to see sexy pictures, whether that's porn or whether that's just like sexy bikini pictures, lingerie pictures. You know, I'm you have like taking hands. sexy pictures. So it's just like, why is there so much shame around it? Because there's a reason that girls are making six figures on OnlyFans. There's a reason it's become such a phenomenon. Babe, it's Whether... changed my life completely. Yeah. Like, and the argument that really annoys me, like, I'm like, men topless and women topless, I, this is going to probably spark so much controversy, we both have nipples, right? Why is it such a bad thing to be topless? Like, see, when I go on holiday to Spain, I'm like, whoa, like... Me and Ruby, we're in Ibiza, like, I'm just chilling around the villa, like, we're both topless. I'm like, I don't want the tan lines. Like, but why do I feel so weird about that when for men it is a normal thing? I'm like, what? How can, who made these rules up? I know. And it's just because women's breasts have been sexualized, right? So, like, we see them as a sexual object. So, they look at breasts, like, they'll look at a vagina, right? Oh my God, like, oh my God, you got your nipples out. But it's like, I don't but see them like you've that. You've got at all. your nipples out as a man and I actually saw recently right on Instagram I think it was um it was someone who was born as a woman a uh, female sex who had nipples and when they posted about it before they had to blur out their nipples right now they've had their breasts removed and they've they transitioned, transitioned and now their male nipples don't have to be blurred out on their Even Instagram the anymore even though they're the exact same nipples that they were born with, but just because they've transitioned gender, it's like, oh no, now like you you can put your nipples on Instagram now because they're male nipples. But that just goes to show, I think to me, that like nipples are all this, everyone's got nipples, everyone's nipples that, are the same. Oh, you sell your body, oh, you sell, I'm like, yeah, you've probably sold your fucking soul, so have I, <laughs> like we all have. Like it's it's just a body, like. Yeah, and you know what my favourite argument is, and that, you know, people say about, oh, you sold your body in sex, it's like, right, but when you sign up to like, and the military is predominantly a male's job, right? When you sign up to the military, you're handing your body over, you might actually be killed. Cold. Like you've sold your body, but When like, you oh. meet a guy on a date <laughs> and you shag him on the first night, you've sold your body. <laughs> like you all we all trade things in life I'm like if I want to take topless pictures I just don't get I'm probably like honestly I'm like a broken record but I just don't oh, understand if people can't have that mindset and also it's like it's literally a body what you know what I mean it's like just moulds of flesh like boobs are just like balls of fat I get it all the time you know what I mean? like, oh my god do you just sell a body. your body but I'm like actually I make money lots of different ways but yes I make a shit ton of money on OF who's winning and you're selling your body making money on your body because it's a body that's been sexualized by society so you can walk down the street and this is for me right like i've been sexualized since i was 11 years old because i had boobs right men grown men would call me jailbait when i was 13 and i have had my body sexualized i could walk down the street go to a swimming pool go on holiday and you will sexualize my body but then as soon as i make money off my body now i'm in the wrong even though i'm trying to like just actually this monetize it that I i've am. been given me and ben went swimming um, David Lloyd's and I had a swimming suit on and there was loads of people in the jacuzzi I literally made Ben like body cover me as we were walking because I'm like if I walk to the sauna or I walk to the steam room I know the minute that I walk past they're all going to turn around Ben was literally walking <laughs> guarding me and then I'm like well they can just google it and see it anyway but that's part of the reason why I think I do want to get off it do you know how weird is that like yeah I sound like a weirdo, I know, because people, no, are, gonna, don't, cause people like, are gonna listen to it and be like, oh, you've just thinking about the money and stuff. And I'm like, I have, I wasn't ashamed of it until- People made you ashamed yeah, of it. Yeah, Until same. I got all the trolls. Like I was in a really safe space with my family, like all my friends, no one cared. People from my hometown did at the start. The minute they see you doing well, they don't care. But like, I wasn't made to feel shit about it until, until like every day now. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, I'm just like, why do you 
care why do you care so what someone does someone says for a me. job you know like what i don't care what you do in job. i don't care if you work at the supermarket i don't care if you're a policeman i literally don't care what your job is you, and most of them like, you're literally a stranger like it's i like, do oh, not you're but selling your body to care? creepy men blah, blah blah and i'm like well they're gonna look on my instagram and see it anyway I just yeah don't or get they're, you're gonna issue. be in a club or you're gonna be walking down the street and they're gonna say it anyway like if you choose to monetize that and you choose to do that that's your choice and i just feel like people are so judgmental right and like when you really like deep it it's like why do you care like do they really care about your life you know what i mean like do they really care yeah like someone came on my switch and they were like oh like the first comment was like oh imagine to only fans and luckily i've got a really good like community on my twitch so like all my little twitchers <laughs> came like why would you even comment that and then he wrote back oh yeah well i sell my feet on it anyway and i'm like so you have literally just outed me to get a reaction to say that you sell feet pics yeah, for promo, probably. anyway. <laughs> I'm like... Probably want to promo his own feet. And also, this is the thing, right? I do think it's jealousy because a lot of times, like, I personally, like... Now, what I liked about the glam modelling was the photo shoots, right? So for me, I never went on OnlyFans because I was like, I actually don't want to talk to the men online. I, I know a lot of it is about that, right? And I was like, you know what? I don't want to take pictures with I just didn't want to do it. So I decided not to. And I just feel like when it comes down to it, like, people... If they could, they would. Like, I think, God, if I could, you know, go up there and make all that money, I think, yeah. you know, just go and do it. Like, good for you. I but think it's like, how you run your page is completely up to you. I think people think that, like, everyone's on there doing certain things. I don't offer chatting. Or yeah. say hi. How are you? Whatever. Like, that's nothing crazy at all. I've never offered it. Never will. So it's like, but if women want to do that, that's fine. But why are you assuming that I get my nanny out and I do all of this and I do all that just because of the stigma. And that's why I'm saying mm. I just want off it now because the minute that you heed it, it's like, I went through a stage like last year to being like so pro. And even this podcast, I'm like pro it. But like every single day on my TikTok, Jess, honestly, like even Instagram and stuff, the amount of comments that are filtered, like thank fuck for filtered comments, by the way. <laughs> and I just read it and it just makes me feel so shit. And I say it all the time. Like I hate bringing up other people's stories to justify my own, but it's like supermodels. I'm not a supermodel at all. Kate Moss, Naomi Campbell, all of them, they've all posed nude. The women are, I, th I find the women body like art. Yeah. My like house is just covered in whether they want to sexualize or, or whatever. <laughs> that's up to them. But I find photos of women's bodies, if it's shot the right way, if it's articulated the right way, it's fucking beautiful. But it's like actresses, everyone, all of it is. Why? Why is it OF girls that so fucking hate? I, I know. Just don't get I can. It. You know what I can picture right now? Wolf of Wall Street, Margot Robbie, totally, Literally. butt naked, and she. As what, been in the running to an Oscars? She's one of the most paid and respected actors in the world. She's amazing. And she's posed naked. And that and should not be a problem. And I'm glad it isn't. That up. But then it's like, why is that seen as respectful? Which it should be. I'm not arguing that it isn't. I'm glad that it is. Same. But then I'm just like, but what's the difference of posting out on OnlyFans then? The platform. That is the only difference. That That's this is what on I'm saying. a film and this is on Game of Thrones. Platform. I said it in one of my other podcasts, like one of my other episodes. I'm like, people watch Game of Thrones and they loved it. That was women walking about with their vaggies out, their tits out, like, like basically like brothels, getting used, like, obviously in the film. It, mm. It's kind of is, like, history. Yeah. And it's like, the actresses are going to have amazing careers. They'll get, like you said, everything. They'll get all, all the things that a lot of people probably would want if they want to be in that type of lifestyle. But... We just get shamed for it. I'm just little 18 year old me trying to make my way, being a pastry girl, do well, look after my family. And I get slandered for it constantly. Yeah. And at the end of the that day, it actually makes me sad. Let's look at my is, tone. Yeah. Uh, it just deflates me, babe, honestly. Yeah, I know. And I think like that's why, like, I've kind of gone down the route. I've gone down and posted about like women's because I just feel like it just, yeah, it just made me sad because I was like, I actually enjoyed the shoot and I enjoyed like, being confident in my body but then it's like I was shamed for it yeah. and I feel like okay well I'm just not going to do that anymore but it's like why should we have to do that and I think at the end of the day like there's a reason that you know OnlyFans is so popular it's because there's an audience for it there's and it changes you know, people's lives people want to see that kind of content so just pay for it and like why is there so much shame around it for me I would love to spend so much energy like trying to fix online behaviors try and regulate it, 
but I feel like it's just a black hole. It is a bit of a black hole. And I think, I guess, here's my uh, top tips. Like, one, don't read the comments. You know, just don't read them. It's so Because hard. as soon as you read them, like, you might have a hundred comments that are positive. That one comment that, like I said, they'll scroll and they won't even think twice. They'll forget that they even commented that probably. And then we think of it. I can still remember comments that someone left five years ago about like how fat my knees were or something. Do you know what I mean? I can still picture that comment and, and that I cried about it. But that person probably doesn't even remember leaving that comment. So like one, don't read the comments. <sighs> now on Instagram, there's a feature, right? And I've set this recently. You're going to show me how to do it. I know, I need to say it, where people can only comment if they follow you. And I'm like, okay, once you follow me, you're a fan. So babe, if you're commenting, like you've gone out the way to comment, um, to follow me to comment hate. Yeah, why? Why? And then I just block them anyway. So I'm like, thanks for the follow, but also block, and you've outed yourself. So it just like gives you a bit more space to be like, you weed out the ones who've made the effort and then you spot them and block them anyway. And then like the last thing I guess I would say about posting what you want to post is like knowing your, and this sounds a bit like kind of, airy fairy kind of thing but like just knowing your purpose of like why you're posting that content yeah. so it's like if you're posting that content whether it's content on your only fans your body whether it's this podcast like you're posting it for a reason because you're happy with it you want to share it then it doesn't matter the reaction to it because it's like you posted it for that one reason and because you wanted to either start a conversation you wanted to make some money like that's the purpose of yeah. it so it's like whatever someone's reaction is or response doesn't phase you because it's like well I know I posted it for this reason I've started a conversation or I've raised awareness or I've made some money from it end of story it's just so much easier said than done 100 no percent. I'm still trying to like process it you know and some days I'm like yeah I'm gonna post this and I'll do you know a TikTok about talking about like sexual harassment or something I'm like I posted that because I wanted to start that conversation and you know share my experience or you know raise awareness and then I might get some really horrible comments from men. And then I'm like, oh my God, like, I, oh, I, I wish I never Why even invited that in. I don't want to comment. horrible comments about sexual harassment? Because they hate being called out. They're like, you must be lying. This doesn't happen. And I'm like, if you just took the same energy to actually just listen and maybe talk to your, any woman in your life would tell you that that is true. And just change your behavior. Like, it's really not that deep. It's like, really not that hard. <laughs> and, if it, and if this doesn't relate to you, like, hashtag not all men, if that isn't you, why are you so offended by it? Just move on and be like, okay, like, well, yeah, I know that. If it doesn't resonate that, with yeah, you, if just move on. Resonate, on. move on don't be like well no you must be lying it's like, i think for me one of the the one of the last things i'll get into but i think the one thing that annoys me is when men speak on women's safety mm. like they know about it like walking down the street on your own doing anything like i literally when i lived in when i lived in tootin because i'm not gonna live there anymore so i'll say it when i used to live in tootin southwest right i was right back in the middle of tootin beck and tootin broadway now there's loads of cctv and stuff on that street but I used to literally, my front door was on the, right on the high street. So if a creepy man like saw me, he'd know that I'd live there like from future reference. So I used to literally have to phone my dad, no matter what time it was, if I'm fucked up and I'm getting in at 4am, my dad's amazing, he'd answer Aww. though. I would literally have to phone him if I was walking down that street. Because babe, I had like, like guys in like C classes, like literally harassing me, following me down the street like trying to speak to me and I'm like I don't want to speak to you like leave me alone and they would literally park outside my flat and watch me go that's in the so flat that's so scary that's really scary god and then yeah that when they comment about it and it's like oh no that can't happen like I don't think that happens it's like oh we're not making out like women don't walk home with keys in their hands for no reason and like have I've, you I've had anything like that I've had like yeah I've had people following me I've had this one guy I was walking these, these two um guys well, I'd got a takeaway right and I was walking it's four in the morning I was walking to meet my friends at a taxi rank and I was walking down this empty kind of street where the takeaways are and my friends were already in the taxi and then these two guys approached me from either side and I was just like, hmm, trying to laugh it off hold my takeaway like you are not to cover like food. my boobs because oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was and, like trying um, not to take yeah, my food. Yeah, and also not take my food. <laughs> and um, then they were like making these comments and they weren't really speaking, you know, much English that I could understand. And then as I walked, got down, they were trying to like grab me around. And I was like, go off, go off. And then they both stood in front of me and they were like laughing. And then they like pulled my hand, like shoved their hand down my top. And I wasn't wearing a bra because I was wearing like this jumpsuit thing. Gro groped me and I was like, go off, go off. And like managed, as I pushed them off, my friend's head like popped out the taxi because we got, and she's like, Jess. And I was like, oh my God, and I ran there. And like, they followed me to the taxi and I got in and like, they were like banging on the taxi door, like laughing. It was actually savage. I get it when I'm in my car, like I'll be driving on the M1 
and then I'll have like a van come up beside me. They've looked at me and then they literally follow me like side by side. I'm in the fast lane, they're in that lane. They'll follow me and they'll toot. Put the number, put the window down. Can I get your number? I'm like, bro, you're doing like 70 miles per hour. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, it's become so normal for us women to like change our day-to-day routine. Yeah, and brush it off also. Yeah, to just be like, oh, we just have to think about our safety. And at the end of the day, I think, unfortunately, we've seen so many cases where women have been attacked. It's like, we could take the you know the bright walk home when there's more street lights we can wear trainers we can wear this we can wear coats like we can get public transport instead of walking home like, like if a man Wearing is set trainers out is so funny because i change these the minute that i leave somewhere into my trainers so you yeah it's so like if i need to run i can you know run. you have to think about stuff like that and it that is it right we just have like combated it into our day-to-day life but it's like at the end of the day if a man is set out to like assault or murder a woman he's gonna do it you know whether i'm wearing trainers or not and i think like men who go oh it's not that big of a deal like oh no it's not that problem i don't know any woman that happens to it. it's like because it's become so normalized to us we, we don't, don't even talk about talk it, about really it. either like, i don't go home and like tell my dad about how you know what route i've walked home we're like oh yeah or you know phone my brother like, like I or remember like when meet my mates skin, and tell them it's just it our would, life it would be like oh i can get an uber home or i can walk and then it's like well i can't really afford the uber but I kind of need to get it because if I walk home, God knows what's going to happen to me. Yeah. And how many times do men think about that? Think of how they're going to get home. Like how many times do men text their mates home when they get home and be like, oh, just to let you know I'm home safe. No, no, I'm doing I do it every, I'm always like, let me know when you get home safe. Yeah. Jess, if I phone my dad, no matter where I am, my dad will come and get me. Like no matter where I am. Oh, that's I love why your I dad. Know, honestly, I could be like, I remember we went to an MK show when I was like 17 and I got really fucked up. And like my brother was with us luckily but my dad got a speeding ticket like speed like speeding points coming to get me which is probably really bad I shouldn't say that but he got it just to come and get me like if if I'm if it's five o'clock in the morning if it's even if I said to my dad I got my wisdom teeth out a couple of months ago there my dad came because Ben was going on tour my dad came to pick me up from Scotland to come and bring me home so that they could look after me so I'm lucky that I've got I've got that like father if I got even Brandon like my brother he's really protective of me but living in London on my own, I used to hate it. Like now I've got Ben, great, but I don't think women talk about it I bet your dad never slept when you lived in London oh on your God. own. <laughs> no, but it's like, it's just little things. Like if I phone him, he'll answer. Yeah. But even if I phone Brandon, he'd probably answer, but I would never, how sad is that? I would never walk to the tube station or even walk up and down the high street on my own. And I don't even mean like at nighttime. I mean, just in general, without like at least phoning my mum or dad, like, because I had to show my dad the car, that like C-class that was following me. I had to like, I was like, can you fuck, I was actually really rude. I was like, can you fuck off? Like after that point, yeah. followed me all the way down, like carbon it, getting on the side, pulling out, like putting the window down. I'm like, bro, and then they're seeing where I live. And why do they think that that's okay to do to a woman on their own? Do you know what I mean? And actually I got the tube over here, right? And I thought this when I was coming here because I knew we we're going to kind of talk about women and stuff. And sat on the tube and right in front of me was the government's new campaign, like they've got a new campaign right enough. And it's all about how to interfere when a woman's been sexually harassed on public transport in the street. And I think, you know what's crazy? We live in a country where our government is having to fund a campaign to actually to educate half the population not to sexually harass us. Like that's so, how much so of sad. an epidemic violence against women and girls is in the UK. And yet when we just talk about it, we're like, oh God, talk, and feminists again talking about it. Oh God, it's not that big of a deal. Not, not all men. And it's, it's like, not feminists, it's, yeah. it's women. And it's like, like, oh, not all men. And it's like, we know not all men. We're not ridiculous. I don't think like half the world's population is, you know, bad guys. But it's like just knowing when to step in or like when to be like, you know, you're making someone uncomfortable. You're following them, you know, like she said, no, just leave her alone. Like don't sit next to her when there's other seats on the bus. And Can you, I get your number? Stuff like that. Can I get your number? No. Can I get your number? No. Can I get your number? No. Like stop asking me i should only have to say no once Once. yeah that's it consent is sexy guys like learn it oh my god she's (laughs) yeah she's got a jumper that actually says consent is sexy i was gonna wear it it today i know right but jess you've been amazing thank you for having me we could talk for hours i know literally literally. so long (laughs) but you've been amazing thank you my little angel Guys, I'll leave all Jesse's socials and everything down below. Make sure you check out the documentaries. Honestly, they are amazing. I'm not just saying that because you're here because I actually do love them. <laughs> but they you. do kind of freak me out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they are creepy. Like, it, it actually makes me think about the human race. I'm like, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> but I will see you guys next week.